Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. Beautiful day around here. Slightly warmer. Very fall. It's really quite pleasant. Really. Happy Sunday. As we do, let's begin with our prayer. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy will. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth the beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. In the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Great. In church, this is the first weekend of talking about the recommitment to give for this year. So the preaching is short. We'll see, because it's also interesting. It's it's always, an, I like it. I hope that everyone likes it too. All right, let's dig in. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light and fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the heart, the earth is full. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and to preserve them in spite of famine. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Our soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us who have put our hope in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Son of Man came to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. He replied, What do you wish me to do for you? They answered him, Grant that in your glory we may sit one at your right and the other at your left. Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the cup that I drink, or be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? 
They said to him, We can. Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink, and the baptism with which I am baptized you will be baptized. But to sit at my right or at my left is not mine to give, but is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at James and John. Jesus summoned them and said to them, You know that those who are recognized as rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you will be the slave of all. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I want to take this opportunity to talk about something fun I did recently. So, on Friday, I was able to hang out with Father Anthony, and that was delightful. And so, we went to the very interesting and cool place that is known as Provo which was very delightful. We had a really great time. And I had asked my barber earlier, yes, I, I should probably go visit him again, my barber about a bookstore that he was telling me about in the area. And it's this bookstore that became a very interesting part of the day. So with the recommendation of my barber, Father Anthony and I went to the bookstore and there we found laid out on one of the tables in the bookstore a number of very old Bibles from the 17th century, from the 18th century, all open to, guess what, the letter to the Hebrews, which is interesting because, of course, we're reading the letter to the Hebrews, and so I, you know, I think it's a sign, you know, we should probably talk about the Hebrews. And I was going to do that anyway, though, because I really love this passage. Specifically, this passage, though, and it's a very powerful one. There's a number of things that we can get from it that I think are very worthwhile. And it's not just because a bunch of Bibles were opened up in a shop to the same thing. But this idea, let us go with confidence to the throne of grace. Confidence in prayer is tremendously useful. But it's also built up by the action of it, by praying. Now, if we look at the way in which we pray, there are a number of ways, obviously, to pray, but there are also some better practices than others. For example, the last time that you prayed for something serious, a serious prayer to God, how much time did you leave for God to speak, or at least to listen? Because here's the thing, most of our prayer is a lot of saying, a lot of like, I'm really interested in this thing and I really need God to listen to me. And that becomes just a lot of noise. A huge amount of our prayer really should be on the receptive side and not just on the asking for things. Sometimes we ask for things which are not quite great. Like, for example, today in the gospel, we hear James and John make their thing for the to sit at your right and your left in your kingdom, which the Lord chides a little bit, a little bit. But we also know that, you know, people do ask for things after all. So what does this intuition from the Hebrews have to say for us? Let us go with confidence to the throne of grace. That is to say, knowing, first of all, this most important part, which is that Jesus does absolutely know who we are. So the first part of the passage is, we do not have a great high priest who is unaware. There's a double negative in there, which means we have a great high priest who is very aware of us and our condition and what we need. And of course, it's talking about Jesus, who is the high priest. And this action of the high priest does what exactly? To intercede to God on our behalf. That is to say, to bring God closer to us and us closer to God. Both, same time. And we go to him looking for a couple things. But what the letter of the Hebrew says is actually really what you get is first mercy, then grace for timely help. 
Usually we're looking for the help right now, the timely help part, and kind of forget about the mercy and the grace that come first. And one of the ways in which we do well is in our prayer is precisely in the search of those first two things. So first of all, when we go with all of our words and all of our cares and all of our worries, we don't really approach with confidence. We're approaching with confusion and a little bit of a case of disaster in the sense that usually it's out of, you know, desperation that we pray and we're reminded it should be out of confidence to build up that confidence. We have to have the habit of it certainly, but in order to really also build up that trust, that's another way in which you can say this confidence is actually just trust. Let's go with trust, with faith to the throne of grace so that honestly, the Lord already knows. Yes, we make our case fine, but it's precisely at that place where God is that it's not just that we are there to dump on him all the time, but rather that we should also receive from him. And that receiving happens in a variety of ways. First of all, give him time. Second, give ourselves the time to give him time. You know, it, it works that very much in that same way. The time of prayer should be a great opening of prayer. Now, it's also not just this. Yes, to receive mercy is a wonderful thing. To receive grace is excellent. And yes, we should go confidently to this throne of grace. But there's another way of interpreting this too. Here we are in October, the month of the Holy Rosary. And guess what? Historically, one of the ways in which this passage is read is actually as talking about Mary. Mary as the throne of grace. So think of those images of like Mary and the baby Jesus and Mary is holding the baby Jesus. There you go. The throne of grace. See, but more importantly, Mary as the place where Jesus is or like the, the concentration of the two being for this same thing. And also like the intercession that Mary does on our behalf and all the saints. Once we say that too, but in a particular way, the prayer of the Hail Mary seems like it's a lot of words. And when we put it together with, for example, an Our Father and several more Hail Marys and several other times like that, you know, the rosary, it seems like a lot of words. But it's actually a dialogue, right? Take the Hail Mary to begin with. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee, says the angel Gabriel. Blessed art thou, my woman, and blessed is the fruit of your womb says Elizabeth. It's already meant to be a conversation. And then even with the Our Father, the disciples say, Lord, teach us to pray. And then Jesus says, when you pray, say, Our Father who art in heaven, and so on. When we pray it, since these prayers are also so well known, that repetition, that rhythm, ends up taking away a lot of the kind of going all over the place in all kinds of weird directions of the chatterbox of prayer, which is not a bad thing by any means, but there are also better prayers. And so giving our time in that rosary, first of all, opens up dialogue because we're not concentrating so much on the chatter and the way in which we're praying, but rather on these words that we already know very well. It's already a receptive kind of prayer. We're not full, like full taking all of our attention and just on the words, but rather the words are themselves a vehicle to be able to get into this place of prayer. And I don't know about you, but certainly for me, after the rosary, once the rosary is completed, there's a nice breath there, which is a very, really open time to be receptive of what God is saying. And especially with this idea of going to the throne of grace, whether we see it as Mary or simply as God in his splendor or anything in between, being able to be there with confidence is tremendously important. The way the lectionary is laid out, the, these readings aren't chosen just you know, by random. The second reading, the, the letter reading, the epistle reading is not always related to, but I think that Today, we get this very good, all-put-together thing, whether that be 
in contrast to the request of James and John to be there at the throne of grace, but like out of not so much trust, but like self-confidence, overconfidence, kind of a bad kind of confidence that comes with pride. Or what we hear about the suffering servant in the prophet Isaiah. Suffering is not unknown to us. And we hear this word, and we should probably also think immediately like, yeah, I've heard that before. It's like a Good Friday thing. Yes, it's talking about Jesus. Yes, the prophecy is about Jesus. Go figure. But we already know that. And it's precisely this about the Lord, which is so valuable because he knows us. He knows what we need. He knows our weaknesses. He knows our concerns. He knows our fears. He knows what is going on in our hearts. And so we should go with confidence. That is to say, not with overconfidence or just self-confidence, but with real trust, because the Lord does know us. And the Lord is very much there for the sake of mercy and grace and timely assistance. That's what I wanted to talk about. It's a wonderful thing. And it just so happened to be that, you know, went into a crazy store and found all these kinds of old and ancient Bibles open up to Hebrews. Because Hebrews is cool, after all. All right. As we do, let's bring our prayers together now and offer them to the Lord that he will hear and answer us. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for our Bishop Oscar, and for all bishops, that they may continue to listen to and be guided by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Catholic Church, that she may continue to provide hope to her members in confusing or difficult times. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's people throughout the world, especially those who are afflicted with illness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish, that we may grow in devotion to Our Lady through the Holy Rosary. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us also pray for Rachel on this, her birthday. Happy birthday, Rachel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gathering all our prayers into one, let us offer them in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours, and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Great. Happy Sunday. Enjoy. It's a beautiful day out there. Very, very nice. Well, we'll see you again tomorrow, and God bless. <laughs>